guys, it's Diane from Art of Craft. A few of you have asked how I make my fantasy scenes and these scenes with fairies in them and it's really, really, really simple so you'll be able to easily make them. You don't have to worry about proportions on them. I mean, look at the size of that bird compared to that house. You don't have to follow rules that you might want to follow. Not that I follow any rules, but you can play and have a lot of fun. You can create these as scenes by themselves and put photos and things on the back just as you would in your albums or in your layouts. And you can also insert your photos into the different scenes like you've seen me do on other videos like this one here where I've inserted Nina, my little granddaughter, into there and she's playing with the bunnies and the fairies and, and doing things. Now this is a very, this is using stamping and I'm going to be using quite a few different techniques on the one I'll create. I really don't know quite what I'm going to do yet but because I just kind of create as I go this along. This is another one. And you can see I have the photo ready and I will insert it into the picture. And this is another one that I created on an, another video where I've used um, the tattered leaves dye and just made it into a, a fun scene. I sometimes put titles on my pages, sometimes I stamp in the background. When I've made these, I've actually used the branch one and I've actually embossed it, pressure embossed it. Now I do this sort of thing to my folders which probably horrifies most of you, but sometimes I want to put this in the middle of something. Um, it's not the right proportion for putting on a bigger piece, and I'm going to show you what I'm going to do about that. So sometimes I emboss them with pressure. I emboss them to get the texture onto them. Um, other times I'll stamp them into the picture, and then I'll emboss them, and I'll use some of the Distress embossing powders um, so I can get texture and mix them with others. Don't forget to, a lot of people don't mix their embossing powders. Mix them. You can get fabulous colours, you can get fabulous textures. And around where I've captured this image, I've actually stamped. And I've used one of Tim Hall's stamps there. It's one, it's a it's crackle effect. And it just gives you an effect around her to make the, the whole scene come alive. And we make a lot of these pictures. For instance, if you look at... This is when I've been making cards. If you look at this picture here, as nice as it is, that's actually a brayering technique and then stamping over the top. It's dead. It's flat. Um, now, f that doesn't mean that you have to add texture to make it not dead flat. All you have to actually put into it is stamp bird, stamp anything if you want to keep your images flat. This one, I've brought the scene a lot a more alive. Again, it's stamping, but I've stamped with paint and created the water around here with distress inks and a little bit of um, that shine you can see. It's just me putting paint on my finger to highlight different areas. But I've brought it more alive by putting the little dragonfly in there. And that's all you're doing. You, you, you've got to add a little bit of wildlife to make the scene come alive. Get into your stash. You will have lots of things you can use to create wonderful textures and effects um, on your I mean, this for this house you've seen me do in another video, I mean, you can make that house look like so many things and insert it into your scene. Um, and if you look at the original die, it looks nothing like that. So use things in there to create on top of your scene that you create and behind to give it depth. If I was to get my pad and my ink blending tool and start colouring that, it would take forever. So this is the reason why you use stains to create effects. Because I can run colours over this really quickly and get the whole round made using these very, very quickly. Then I can use my ink blending tool and my inks to add detail and splatter it and stamp it. But it does take a long time to go over a, very, a 12 by 12. It can take a long time to create that and you can get marks and oh, there's a million ways to get rid of them and hide them but sometimes it's just easier to use your stain. Sometimes before I begin anything just to um, confuse the issue I will actually get it my lightest pad which is the sponge sugar and I'll do this on tags I'll do it on cards you would have seen me do it in the late last video when I was showing you how to do LeBlanc stamping 
and I'll just run it all over the whole page just all over it and it just gives me um, I call it a swipe pad I keep it separate from the other pad because it gets very dirty because I tend to use it to swipe things out when I don't like what I've created um, and so I don't and I use the sponge sugar. so we're going to be creating on manila card because it's going to have to take a lot of wet media um, I've told you how you can use this particular folder to create the smaller scenes we're going to create a larger scene and so what we're going to do on that larger scene this is just for an example this is just starting off an image I've swiped all that um, I was showing a friend how to do this and she started to do this one uh, she stamped in the background and we but we've created our tree in this particular one using Tim Holtz dye it is called branch tree this is a die that I go back to and back to and back to and if any of you have got it in your stash which you probably have you start looking at it again because you can use it in so many different ways so I have cut out my bits and when I cut out my trees there is a lot of paper left in these corners and I just keep on cutting the branches out so I end up with bits and pieces that when I'm wanting a larger or a more textured dimensional tree I can emboss and then I can colour and I can build it up as I have done with this one. Use your uh, another one, to, the wood grain one I've used, Tim Holtz wood grain one here to texture up my tree. There's actually two trees there and a few other branches. I've textured one of them with, with this and then I've coloured it with my embossing powders. Now I keep a container and it's actually got a mixed up few different colours in there. Uh, light and browns and, and I use that a lot for trees and sometimes I highlight it with golds or if I'm not liking how it looks I'll get out my Viva Decor and I'll colour up the edges and do this is just so many things you can do use your paint um, I just happen to love using the distress powders because of the beautiful grainy texture they give you and I like I like that look on my trees and this one I've just joined together and it'll end up in the scene don't forget to you know put other ones so you can bring branches in over the side so you've got a scene where you're creating where you're looking through into it where you've got fairies or whatever you decide you want to have in there uh, and don't forget a good idea is if you've got this picture in mind or the scene in mind for a photo that you have that photo around so you can work out the proportion of it and where you would like it it doesn't have to be exact it's a fantasy thing don't worry about it the other thing you can do there's lots of things you can do with these trees to texture them um, on this one I've used just a couple of colored embossing powders this one I've actually got um, light crackle paint on this one I've used beauty and um, I've actually just ran dampened my finger a little bit before I put the beauty on so it will bubble up and go all um, crack, all sort of bubbly and textured and lumpy and you can stamp them and you can colour them with that's just stamped um, this one you see I've done it I've done this on grunge board and I've done that bubbly effect on half of it so when I colour it this half will be nice and smooth again it's giving me dimension and texture so there's a lot of things you can do and there's a lot of way you can use your branches afterwards I use these branches off the trees a lot when I'm um, doing 12 by 12 and inserting. They become vines, they become all part of the uh, nature scenes that I'm trying to create when I'm having fun play. You'll see me using, they'll look like this, because um, I've had these for many years. But you can buy them now in sets like this. And you'll see me using this stamp here. These are not in proportion to the stamp. The stamps are on the back here, you can see they are a lot larger so the images you're looking at look small but they step the size and the trees you can buy these and they're, they're fabulous and they're fun and if you're into making scenes you need them in this particular set there's even like a sun you can make it a moon there's tiny little birds here um, and so you can create scenes from them this is very much an Australian one I've used this one a lot because I love the old the gate and you would have seen me use that in the one I did on tags where we're just stamping and colouring and I like to have things that are alive so sometimes I have you know dogs and and that's a toilet with somebody sitting in it 
Um, if you want more more direct, intense images, you can use stamps like this one. Don't be afraid of these darker stamps. I'll show you how to stamp them in one of the videos and how much fun they can be and how you can create all sorts of effects with them. But they're fun to do and especially fun if you've made a big boo-boo because you can put these over the top and, and bring your scenes out. This is what I use a lot. It's in one of um, Tim Holtz's sets called Nature's Discoveries. Love it. Try and keep it in stock. Um, it's hard to keep in stock. Um, this one here is, I put this one in here because I've mentioned this in other videos, you, but everybody always asks me about it again. And it's the stamp that never leaves my side. This is the one I use the most of. You'll see me using it to texture the back. You can see a little bit in this. This is not how it's going to be, but you can see a little bit of this effect back here. And that's because you don't want a flat scene. This is almost like your paintbrush, where an artist would create texture using his brush and his skills with shading. You're going to use it. You're going to use this to do that for you to create texture on your page in shading, just by stamping it in different different inks and um, stamping it on your page. These are golden products, and I've used um, glass bead gel a lot in the past, but because the tree in this particular scene is I've created it so it's going to be quite dimensional. I might try some of this coarse pumice gel on it to see if I can um, have some texture in the background from for my leaves where I'll stipple. Um, and stippling, by the way, is these are your stippling brushes. Now, this is a stipple brush that I'll use. Um, it's it, it's more it's hairy, it's softer. Um, you might have something like this that you use in your collection that you've used to stipple through your stencils and masks and you can use it great with paint chalks and everything. If you've got one of these and you've got a spare one and you don't want to, these are really cheap, but if you don't want to go out and buy one, to get the effects that I do you can just cut, cut some of those bristles out with your scissors and you'll be able to create an effect like this. But th this is the brush that I'll use, so those are the what you use to stipple, or what I use to stipple. Your little flowers. Your little flowers are fabulous to insert into the seams, and they're nice and flat. You'd especially use flowers and like this if you wanted to create a layout that is really flat for your 12 by 12 and you don't want a dimensional look. You can use these, which will give you a little bit of dimension, but won't affect how it lays in your albums. If you're going to use your punches to create your flowers, one thing I've noticed that some people don't do is they punch out of right and then they colour them beautifully. But don't forget to texture them. Get your embossing folders. Get your, you know, this is a cracked one. I use that sometimes. This is sort of a brocade one. Again, those are Tim Holtz Sizzix dies. Um, embossing folders. Texture them too so that you get some dimension into your flowers. It actually doesn't matter. As long as you're not using something like a square, um, that will show up as a square on your flower and you don't want that. Use something that's got um, just free form um, dimension and it will make your flowers look so much better. So if you're going to use punches, don't forget to do that.
okay I was real clever and the camera wasn't recording all I've done though is um, stuck down my tree here and I've used the Claudine Helmuth matte medium and I have which I would have liked you to have seen I've used my um, stamp here um, to texture in the background but all I have done to do that is I choose colors in this case you can see there's um, warm lipstick back there and I have just stamped it you can see my practice ones here um, into my image around to give it just like you would to give um, a picture depth with brush strokes and shading and all I've done is choose the colours that I like to go with it and just stamp through the back. And if you look real close you'll see some of the texturing through there. That's what our first layer looked like and this is all about layering. We've got our stamps, we've got our inks going over the top. This is what our second layer looks like when we're putting more colour in there. Now I'm just mixing some paint that I'm going to stipple on using a brush like this just over the top of here and I'm also going to texture it. I'm going to use the clear granular gel to texture it. I might use glass bead gel. Um, if you've got blue, you can use glass bead gel if you so wish, it doesn't really matter. Here I've mixed up um, the Claudine Helmuth Geo Paint. I've mixed the blue and the yellow to get a green. I've just shaded it down so I've got several shades of green there and this white that you're seeing on top there is Chlorine Helmets extra time. I'm going to mix it in with the paint and it gives me uh, a longer time for the paint to dry. Acrylic paint dries really fast and I don't want it to dry too fast. I can scurry it along if I want with my heat tool but at the moment I don't want to lose the paint that I've got on there. strange for a little bit because I'm going to be stippling over top of this dimension here. But just remember I am going to put some of this uh, clear granular gel in later or the glass bead gel which is going to create the leaves that are going to bunch up over that tree. And I'll be doing a little bit of stuff down here to start creating some um, ground texture ready to put flowers and things on. a little bit. I'm going to put some glad wrap over that and because I've put that extra time in there it's not going to dry for quite a while and you can see I'm starting to build the layers. I've yet to put colour in there and it all looks a bit the same but when I bring the other textures over the top and put a little stippling over there to do flowers or perhaps I'll stamp it'll start to get a life of its own. But don't be afraid you can see that's hardly challenging to stick a bit of paint on a stipple brush and dab it into your work. Um, it's not it's not a skill, it's just <laughs> dabbing it on and anybody can do it. Okay, I'm going to put a little bit of this, this is 
fairly dry now. I'm going to put a little of this uh, clear granular gel over the top. Now you could actually mix your paint in that if you wanted to and mix up a colour. But I'm just going to bring it over the top so I can make bunches of leaves on this tree here. I'll texture the back later on here with a little bit of glass bead gel and down here when I'm finished because I haven't made flowers, I haven't done anything down there yet and I'll still even bring um, these colours over the top again of um, the Tim Holtz Distress Inks later as well just to, to get more colour in the background there. So at the moment I'm just going to put clumps of this on for a little bit strange but let's see how it turns out. It'll go on white, it'll dry clear um, and then I will still colour it after that. Just do it till you think it's going to work for you. It doesn't matter if you muck it all up because you can paint all over this again and do more texture, bring colour over the top. Nothing's finished until it's finished, so don't worry about how it looks for a start. Just get general shapes. 